thing and welcome to Sound Shop. My name is Akpanaluo, and I started Sound Shop seven years ago as a way to connect musicians and music lovers of all different musical backgrounds and experiences to experience both performances and conversation and exchange ideas with each other about music. And I've hosted them pretty much once a month, even through quarantine, I was doing them online and started off in my apartment in 2017. And now it is at this illustrious space called Club Curious. Club Curious is the non-alcoholic speakeasy of non-alcoholic brand Curious Elixirs. And the founder, JW, I always like to say, uh, puts as much care into uh, the mocktails that he creates as he does into creating this space. So if you haven't gotten a chance to try them, definitely give it a try and um, encourage you to, to keep grabbing uh, mocktails uh, throughout the evening. Um, so raise of hands, uh, who's, uh, is it your first time here? Awesome, welcome. And raise your hand if you've been here before. Awesome, welcome back. Um, and for those of you who are not uh, familiar with the format for the event, I'll just briefly run through it. Um, so over the next uh, little over an hour, there will be um, three uh, performance conversations. So an artist or artist will get on stage. They'll uh, take about five minutes to talk about their musical journey, the song that they're going to perform, um, anything uh, they'll talk about their inspiration, their process, anything that they'd want the audience to listen out for. Then they'll perform that song. And then finally, we'll get um, 10 minutes uh, to, uh, to ask uh, the musician questions and engage in conversation. And so we'll do that for each of the three artists. And then at the very end, we'll close things out by giving everyone an opportunity to raise their hands and to say what they are looking for or seeking to um, advance their creative pursuits. Um, and that'll take us to about like 9.15, 9.20, and then we'll uh, just get back to mingling and connecting with each other. Um, and so I don't give much exposition for each artist. I let them do the talking. Um, so without further ado, I will call up the first artist, Sandra. I decide which mic to use because I, there's this, but then there's also the one that I'll be using. But I'll I'll just use all the mics that are available today. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Sandra. Um, as I talk, I will also put on my main instrument, which is my tap shoes, because I'm a tap percussionist. Um, and it's actually kind of cool that you don't really see the tap board because that's one of the main things that I want to. Um, that I'm kind of going for <laughs> with tap percussion is that to me it is fully a music instrument. It is like I don't call myself a dancer. I d have no idea how to actually dance. I don't choreograph. Like, no idea. Um, <laughs> I do feel music very deeply and it comes out of my feet. Um, so, yeah, you'll be hearing that. Um, so, I'm going to play my second single. I'm going to, here, I'll put this here. I mean, you can also hear me talk without, so. Without the unplugged. That's the whole sound. Oh, I see. That makes sense. All right. Actually, not unplugged uh, shoe um, putting on. Um, <laughs> so the song I'll be playing tonight is called Miss You Rose. It's my second single that I released um, last year in December. And it basically is like a celebration encapsulation of the divine feminine. Um, which to me is more of a concept of like just allowing the kind of the this energy of or allowing things to come to you and being being kind of in the in the receiving mode and allowing yourself to be soft um, and all those beautiful things. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I feel like I don't want to talk much more. I'm just gonna get right into it and then uh, we'll talk to each other on the other side.
Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, I guess now it's time to talk again. <laughs> Any qu am I moderating this? Or yes. yes? Yes, we have a question right here. <laughs> uh, my process. Um, Interestingly, it does not start with the taps. Um, I feel like the taps are, because that's really my main, like all of the other stuff, it's like I'm, I'm always crossing my fingers it goes well. Um, <laughs> um, the taps feel so intuitive for me that it's almost harder for me to compose because like it just flows, like all of this was, was improvised aside from like the, like the basic groove beat. Um, so it rarely starts with a rhythm. I feel like it usually starts with, with some kind of har harmonic 
um, pattern um, because that engages like my more, I guess, lyrical sensibilities rather th than the rhythm because like I could make just rhythmic compositions, but I feel like um, after a while I realized I, I want my stuff to not be just rhythm because like rhythm and harmony and melody together I react most strongly to. And so like, um, yeah, usually it's like harmony, then some kind of groove and then like melody. La melody is always the hard, melody and lyrics are always the hardest for me. Um, but yeah. Yes, another question. Yeah, so I started tap dancing when I was 10, um, and I always was most connected to the music aspect of it. I was never interested in, like, the theatrical dance aspect. Um, I, n I just never connected with it, but I very much connected with, like, making music with my feet. And so, um, like, the first few years, I was just kind of, like, a regular tap dancer. Um, and then when I started kind of forging my own path and, like, developing my voice as an artist... Um, I just became more and more extreme because after a while I was like, well, if I if I connect so cl so strongly to the music, then I think it makes sense for me to write music. Um, and then I was like, well, I'm not a dancer. Like I don't I don't choreograph. I have no interest in like being on a theatrical stage and doing things. I appreciate other people doing it, but it's not what I'm feeling, what I'm connected to emotionally. And so. Um, yeah, that just that just kind of led me organically to then like putting down my first like recording bits and logic and then like out of those beats grew the songs and then like oh how I, how can I perform this live and now it's like I'm actually like this is what I do like I'm a tap percussionist and like um yeah that was basically the process. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, it's definitely um, an ongoing challenge, I think, to uh, because really what I'm doing with my, my music is trying to replace the drums um, with my taps. And so like th it is going to be a different frequency spectrum. And so um, I think for me it's an ongoing process of figuring out how the different patches on my synth um, work with the frequencies that I have. And I mean, ideally at some point I would like to get to a point where somehow I can whether that's through effects or just like <laughs> getting really specific about my technique, like where in a live context I can achieve the same things that I achieve in a recorded context. Cause like when I record, of course I can like do all the things and like EQ and compress and, and everything and like actually make it feel like a kick. Um, but yeah, it definitely, it definitely changed. And sometimes I get frustrated. I'm like, oh, this would, this would, re would really, so really sound good with like an actual kick, but like it's not there. So yeah, I guess I'll have to work with what I have. <laughs> yes. Um, I, I definitely think about that a lot. How the presentation will affect how people receive it. Um, because say like I use the entire stage, there would be the expectation for me to like move on the stage. That's first of all why I have such a small board because it really, it's like, this is where my instrument is. Like, it's like a cajon, like I'm not gonna move anywhere with this. Um, and may maybe I think too much about how people perceive it, but like it's always like when people come up to me after a gig and they're like, oh, it looked so good. The tap routine that you did. I'm like, did you understand what I did? Like I'm, I'm, I'm literally on my small tap board just like, and like they're like, oh, it looked so good. <laughs> did, you, did you listen to what happened? <laughs> but yeah, it definitely affects uh, my, my choices, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Those are two very good questions. Um, this is a piece of plywood from Home Depot that I put furniture pads under that I've had for like eight years, um, and it's been serving me really well. Um, it's mostly like, I don't know, some people might get really specific about the kind of wood. I'm not, like this, I think this is birch, but it could be something else. Um, it's more about just like having the resonance underneath. Um, I currently do not have downstairs neighbors, which is definitely a consideration for which apartments I choose. Um, Yes. Uh, so far, I've only had one run in with a downstairs neighbor. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, they do. So uh, depending on like different tap shoe brands and stuff like that, it definitely makes a difference. Um, there's also a lot of experimentation going on with not being in tap shoes. So like there's a thing that is called soft shoes, which is basically like could be any kind of shoe just without the metal taps underneath them. Um, and there's also Barefoot. There's actually, um, in the like released version of the song that I did, there's also layers of sand percussion. So like um, I put, and this is not something that just I, like it, it's a thing in like the tap dance history. Like you put sand on the board and then either with shoes or bare feet, you can like, it's kind of like a brush effect as with, with the drums. Um, yeah, so there's, there's definitely all different kinds of ways to make sounds with your feet. Yeah. Yes. Um, I'm definitely a very, I, I have a lot to thank all the tap dance masters present and past that I either got to study with in person or got to, um, study with through watching YouTube footage. Um, so I think like because tap dance as an art form has such a specific history and like such a specific, um, yeah, it's just such an eclectic um, art form that has so many stories built in in, in and of itself. Um, it's definitely a part of me, even though like I don't do like straight up tap dancing, whatever, <laughs> whatever that even means. Um, so I feel like that's the foundation and then at a certain point, it kind of switched to learning more from really any music makers, um, whether that's percussionists, whether that's drummers, whether that's really anybody that makes music that inspires me. Um, so yeah, I would say like the foundation of tap and then the music that's built on top of that, yeah. Yes, yes. I have not, I took one flamenco class um, it's really hard because then there's also like all the arm movement where I'm like, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a lot to coordinate here. Um, no, I know some people that like, there's actually this one lady, Heather Cornell, who's, who's one of the people that I learned from. She's a foot percussionist I within like the tap dance lineage. And she made an album with her and a flamenco dancer as the two percussive And it's like kind of world music stuff so i feel like she already kind of figured that out very nicely <laughs> but yeah any other questions one more question yes yeah yeah i think I think there's a few right now the the most the one that's most present in my mind right now um it's actually two Sam Gendel and Sam Wilkes from LA I don't know if you guys are familiar with their music um they're bridging the gap between like really groovy but also like their music is groovy but it develops very slowly which I really appreciate and something that I, I want to um, cultivate in my music as well where it's not like necessarily a song form or like a, like a jazz standard or something where it's more like kind of a, a very a very specifically played beat that's also not repetitive where like the the the, the grooves and patterns slowly develop from one thing into the next and like take you on this journey um, so I feel like yeah that's that's a long answer to <laughs> <laughs> to your question, but yeah. Yeah, cool. Thank you guys so much. Thank you.